Welcome back to Upside Down Data. It's great to be back talking about the markets and what better way to kick things off than talking a little bit about Chainlink. So Link has not been doing anything especially impressive really for quite a while. Ever since we got back up to $22 back here in March, it's pretty much just been a downtrend. So I think the question is, is this just going to continue on? Are we going to go back down into this godforsaken range that we were in for so long through 2022 and 2023? Or will this be the bottom? Maybe this wick down here to $8. Will that be the bottom? And can we actually start charting a course to the upside? So let's go ahead and talk about the context and what some of our models are seeing. So I want to start off by talking about the broader market context right now that Link finds itself in. And the good news is that it's looking pretty decent. This is the S&P 500. We can see that we rallied out of this correction that we saw from July into August. And it's looking like it's possible we're going to break out further to the upside. Now, one thing we'll need to watch is that the FOMC Fed meeting is happening next week. I think depending on the size of that rate cut, that could determine how much risk assets rally. So we're going to have to see what happens with that and how things react. But so far, so good. And it's not just the S&P 500. The NASDAQ is looking more constructive, although not quite as good. The Dow Jones is getting very close to putting in a new all-time high. We're also seeing the DXY, which is the strength of the dollar relative to a basket of other fiat currencies, seeing it continue to struggle. The reason why this is good news is that the DXY tends to be inversely correlated with crypto. When the DXY is doing well, crypto tends to do poorly. When it's doing poorly, crypto tends to do well. And what we might really want to see here is the DXY break down decisively below this support range. That might be a very nice context, a very nice tailwind that could allow risk assets like crypto to do well. I'd like to see that continue. So the broader context then is constructive. Now, there are, of course, things to worry about. The market could react very negatively to whatever the Fed does. We'll have to see. But I do think this is a positive context that assets like Link would much rather be in this situation than, for example, seeing the stock market being in a big correction or something like that, like we've seen in some of these times in the past. But now let's go ahead and talk about what some of our models here are seeing. So this is our short-term upside downside potential indicator. It is a risk model. If you've been following the channel, you're probably very familiar. Higher levels, higher risk. Lower levels, lower risk. Here's what moves the play out over days to weeks, so much shorter in its time horizon. And as you can see, when we went on these big runs more recently, as we got up to those topping points, this model really spiked up, suggesting that we're tapping out on a lot of the realistic upside potential in the short term and that corrections were probably going to be following, or at the very least, consolidation. Now, what's notable is that as that's been happening, we've been dipping into deeper and deeper risk levels on these dips down. And we've actually gotten all the way back down to almost negative four on this dip down over here. And you'll notice when you see these levels on this model, historically, they've tended to be pretty good acquisition times for Link. And there might just be short-term volatility that comes off of them to the upside. But also, if you've just been averaging in at those levels throughout all this, that's when it can set you up nicely for these bigger rallies and really pay off nicely. So we did bounce on risk from those levels. We're at a little bit higher levels, but certainly nothing too concerning. Not at these levels that we've seen that have marked more notable topping points for Link. And if we look at the long-term UDPI, so this cares about moves that play out over months to multiple months. So it's not worrying about that short-term volatility nearly as much. See a similar story. We're actually now all the way back down at this deep value zone that we only have really gotten to on this model a handful of times in the past. And again, when we've gotten there, it's historically been a very good acquisition time. Now, obviously, there's not financial advice. You should make up these data as you will. But this is what we're seeing right now. And it's notable that we're getting down to these risk levels at higher prices than we were last time, which was back over here when we dipped all the way down to $5, into the $5 range. Now we're all the way up in the $10 range and we're back at those risk levels. That is a good sign, suggesting that even though we're at higher prices, the realistic downside potential is pretty limited right now from the model's perspective. Realistic upside potential is quite large. So this is a nice potential launching point for a rally. Though, of course, it's notable, we got down to those levels back through here, and you had to wait a while to see that upside, but it did 
come. This ended up being a good acquisition point for Link. Okay, let's talk about another model that's a little bit more shorter term in its focus, and that is our trend confidence indicator. And really, this is a model I like to look at to think of when might a rally kick off. So if we are in a position where we might be setting ourselves up nicely for some upside, when should we think that upside might actually be coming? That's why I like watching the TCI. Basically, if the TCI is trending up, that's bullish. If it's trending down, that's bearish. And I really like to watch it in relation to what price is doing. If price is trending down or kind of sideways, but you see the TCI explode to the upside, that is a good sign suggesting that some upside might be likely to follow. Then as you see the TCI really aggressively move back to the downside, that's concerning, a correction is probably coming, and then so on and so forth. So you really move up, price moves up, so you're moving down, price moves down or consolidates, moving up, price moves up, so on and so forth. Now, notably, off of these lows over here in early August, we've been aggressively moving up on the TCI. So even though price has been going more or less sideways, we're actually seeing pretty aggressive price movement to the upside, which is good news in my view. And it might suggest that some notable upside could be in the cards. So the thing that we're going to have to be watching, I'm going to be watching it closely. But this is, again, constructive in that shorter term. We're seeing constructive behavior on the risk models. We're now seeing constructive behavior on the TCI. It is a good sign. And I think it really could depend on for example, what happens with the Fed meeting and how do risk assets more broadly react. But maybe that's the thing that could set us up for what has been a not great September that could maybe turn into maybe a better October. In some ways, looking back to what happened last year, when really it was September of 2023, mid-September, especially October, where we really saw that upside, could it just be that simple again? Something we'll have to watch and see. But certainly the conditions are lining up that that very well could be a possibility. It's definitely a hypothesis worth watching in my opinion. Okay, so the final thing I wanted to talk about is some on-chain data. And this really gets at what are people doing? And specifically what I wanna talk about here is the big holders. So these are people who hold a million to 10 million link. That's this teal line here. And then this orange line here is the number who are holding 100,000 to a million. So basically 100,000 plus link and watching how are the numbers growing in terms of the number of wallets and what we can see is that those mega holders of link have actually been growing more or less that we're seeing through here now obviously these are just a part of the ecosystem and you can see the numbers are not massive as some of these the ones holding a million to 10 million only 83 so it's not huge but it is just notable that the people who hold a lot of link are actually, it seems like the number of people who are doing that is increasing. It is not falling off a cliff. And if, and that's something I think is, is just useful to keep an eye on, because if it was falling off a cliff, that'd be really concerning and mean that the people who maybe had the most conviction or holding the most link are now dumping it, trying to get rid of it. Doesn't seem to be the case right now. Now, obviously this is not any indication that that means that price just has to go flying up to the upside or anything like that. Certainly you can see these numbers go up and price go down. That's happened before. Throughout this entire bear market, the number of these mega holders was going up while price was falling off a cliff. But it maybe does suggest that the people who are kind of most invested in Link have not given up and that they're still holding strong. And that is, I think, something that's just worth watching because if it was going the other way, that would be very concerning. So then to wrap us up, I do think that Link finds itself in a good overall situation right now. Certainly price action has not been good. It's been very depressing. But I think the broader context continues to shape up nicely. And I think especially if we do see more constructive behavior from broader risk assets like S&P 500, even just Bitcoin, if it's able to regain its footing, go up and reach the higher end of this range over here, that would be a good sign. And the models are all suggesting that a positive October is very much a possibility. All right. Hope you like the content. If you want to see the live data from our models and more, you can go to our website, PlayerDigital.io. And of course, give the video a like, follow us over on X, where we post a lot of updates about our models and more, and subscribe to us on YouTube. See you in the next one.